One of the campaign promises made by a coalition of opposition parties during 2016 presidential elections in the Gambia was the setting up of a commission to look into human rights violations under former President Yahya Jammeh's 22-year rule. When I was appointed Attorney General, it was my duty to fulfill the promises that were made to the Gambian people by the coalition in so far as the issues of justice and law are concerned. And that's why it fell within my responsibility to ensure that the Truth Commission is established. My name is Honorable Dembaso of Nyaminawes. I personally voted for the bill. Six weeks after the National Assembly passed the TRRC bill, an executive secretary was appointed and offices of the secretariat constructed. My name is Bawagale Chalo. I'm the executive secretary of the TRRC. Gambians had for far too long suffered under a repressive regime. A regime that failed its social contract with the citizens and in doing so oppressed the very people it swore to serve and protect. We resolve here today to investigate and establish an impartial historical record of the nature, causes and extent of violations and abuses of human rights committed from July 1994 to 2017, January 2017. The offices are now fully operational here at Dunes Resort near Palmarima Beach. Uh, essentially, there are two institutions or two um, uh, offices, if you like, in the TRRC. There is the commission, which is the 11 commissioners um, that sits over there for the hearings. And then there is the secretariat, uh, which is the administrative arm of the entire commission. Now, within the secretariat, we have different units. We have the research and investigations unit. And within that unit, we have research, researchers and statement takers and investigators. And then we have the victim support unit. Uh, we have the Women's Affairs Unit, we have the Reconciliation Unit, we have the Communications Unit, um, uh, and we have the Youth and Children's Network uh, Unit. Thank you very much, Your Eminence. Um, we will continue our consideration of the main agenda item before the Commission, uh, and uh, that is uh, the hearing uh, involving witness um, uh, Mr. Ibrahim Chongan. Thank you very much, Emma, for setting the scene for us uh, to start with uh, what happened in uh, July 1994. That is a good starting point on what is to have uh, to come the next 22 years. I, Sheriff Gomez. I, Sheriff Gomez. Sheriff Swear. Emil Gomez. Swear that I'll speak the truth. Swear that I'll speak the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Sworn testimonies at the TRRC have now started to shed light on the Mr. nature Gomez, of violations committed, where they were committed, and who was behind them. Um, good morning to you, sir. As you know, my name is Horeja Balagay, and I will be leading your questioning on behalf of the commissioners. Carefully selected commission members, representing all creed and regions of the country, have the delicate task of listening keenly to testimonies of witnesses. Um, in our task to create an impartial history or historical record of violations and abuses of human rights. Uh, you personify the uh, victims who really suffered, and in your own case, the entire period that uh, the Assembly, the National Assembly, asked us to look at. The 11 commissioners are led by an eminent diplomat with years of United Nations experience. My name is Lamin Sise, uh, chair of the TRRC. Coming in as a national of the Gambia to carry out services he has provided to other nations in the past, 
Dr. Sisi sees his appointment as a national call. It is indeed um, after 30, 40 years with the United Nations um, for me to be approached by uh, the leaders here to come and assist in chairing this um, commission. I thought that was uh, uh, a wonderful opportunity. It's a call that um, I cannot uh, say uh, no to. I need to um, uh, come back and assist in carrying out the task um, given to the uh, Commission. So yes, indeed, I saw it as a national call to come and uh, assist in the uh, issue of um, uh, uh, healing and uh, reconciliation after what has happened in this country for 22 years. What prepared me for it really is almost um, the entire UN uh, experience. As a lawyer in the Office of Legal Affairs, I worked for years uh, in the Department of Peacekeeping Operations, working as a lawyer, working with them, uh, Mr. Kofi Annan, the former uh, head of um, uh, that before he became Secretary General. All that sort of um, helped in uh, putting together uh, or sort of um, preparing me um, for that. The time that I spent with them and the Secretary General traveling, we had um, uh, been in areas where we had meetings with um, transitional justice institutions. We had um, uh, truth and reconciliation commissions that we had seen around. And uh, uh, the first one that uh, got, the both, got both of us involved in was the one in South Africa, chaired by uh, former Archbishop of um, Cape Town, uh, Archbishop Desmond Tutu. <coughs> Excuse me. And then uh, for about three or four years, Mr. Annan and I were involved in uh, establishing the Kenya uh, Truth, Justice and Reconciliation Commission. So with that background, uh, and going around the world, meeting with them, uh, TRCs, it never occurred to me that uh, we would have TRCs in the Gambia. Help us in uh, our task as we seek to establish the truth. This we ask in your son's name, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. On January 7th, 2019, TRRC sittings commenced with the events of 24th July 1994 as they relate to the coup d'etat held the next day. The two-year mandate of the sittings will follow a chronological order. Uh, Mr. Suare, uh, let's take it step by step. Uh, you had several groups at the airport. Uh, you had the Guard of Honor, that's one element. You also had military police, that's another element. Uh, you said it was only military police that, were, that would normally be armed. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, what happened to the military police? Uh, the military police, they have been disarmed by the Nigerians. Uh, who was the commander of the military police on that occasion? It was uh, Lieutenant Yajame. Uh, I want to talk about what happened at the airport. I want to talk about uh, what happened to certain officials in the army uh, after your incarceration. I want to talk about the whereabouts of the IGP and President Jara soon after the coup was announced. Uh, I also want to talk about the U.S. Uh, Gambia military drill that was supposed to occur on the day of the coup itself. I, Bubakarba. I, Bubakarba. Those who heard that. Those who heard that. I'll speak the truth. I'll speak the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me Allah. Thank you. Can you tell us briefly about the coup itself in July 1994? I had seen some strange people soldiers, you know, carrying weapons, others carrying rockets, others carrying some light support weapons. 
you know, advancing towards us. Then that's where, you know, they, they, they arrested us in 94. After three weeks and 13 witnesses appearing before it on the July 1994 thematic phase, the commission is now ready to move on to the next phase, which will look into the events of 11th November 1994, when some soldiers of the Gambia National Army were accused of attempting a counter-coup and executed. Behind the scenes, research and investigative teams of the TRRC are busy preparing the ground. My name is Olaji Barrow. I'm the, the director for research and investigations. This is where the process of witness testimony begins, with statement taking, research and investigation. Well, the research and um, investigations unit consists of three separate units. Um, we have the statement takers who receive all the complaints that the public has of human rights violations. Um, they receive the statements, take these statements, um, transcribe these statements, and these statements are forwarded to a research unit. The research unit would look into those statements to see what human rights violations are and also categorize them according to the theme that we are investigating or that we are looking at. For instance, the last one we just did was 1994. So all the victims or complaints that are, re um, that are related to 1994, these researchers would look at those complaints and arrange them accordingly and then pass it on to the investigators who would go out and question people and question witnesses and find out or at least establish, try to establish the truth of what happened. Digging for the truth at TRRC hearings is a process that requires tact, patience and precision. A team of counsels in the legal unit of the TRRC has the task of peeling the testimonies of witnesses that appear before it layer after layer. Do you recall seeing um, Saadi Buhaidara and Sana Sabali after the torture um, incidents? When they are being escorted, you will see that they are going and they are the only people who live in security wing number, number one. And when the torture session finishes, you will know that they are taking back people back to security wing number, number one. So the question is whether during those 24 years you had knowledge that this place had at some stages been used to torture people. Well, did I, did I, did I, did, did I hear about it? Did you have knowledge? Knowledge can come through yeah. different forms. You can hear about it, you can see it. Well, I've heard about it, but I've not seen it. I've never been where I've seen torture taking place. Or I've never also participated, if it had happened, uh, in, a torture, in a torture team. Thank you. Well, my name is Horeja Balagay. I'm the deputy counsel here. So the legal team's job is to assist the commissioners by directing the investigations. So we work very closely with the research and investigations unit. And it is our job to make sure that the investigations follows human rights violations, which are mainly legal issues, and to ensure that in, um, interviews are conducted in a way that takes into account a lot of legal rights, as well as legal elements, essentially. So it's not a very legal process, like a court, but at the same time, we have to ensure that investigations are conducted very well. Another thing we do is to prepare witnesses for court. So it is our role as counsel to question the witnesses, to ensure that they give us as much evidence as necessary for the commissioners to come to a decision and a conclusion um, as to what really happened over the 22 years of um, the previous regime. So we prepare in many different ways. Um, one thing that's important for witness preparation is to conduct a pre-hearing meeting. So we wit meet with witnesses beforehand and we give them an idea of what to expect from the process. We um, ask them different types of questions, how they would want to testify, um, issues of concern to them, because it is very victim focused. So we ensure that they're very well prepared um, for the testimony, take into account any concerns. We liaise a lot with other units, such as the victims unit, the women's affairs, to ensure that important uh, matters such as psychosocial support is um, conducted with the witnesses either before or after to ensure that the entire process doesn't re-traumatize them essentially. Human rights violations committed during 22 years of Jamis rule 
have left an indelible mark on a lot of its victims. The TRRC may not be able to hear from all the victims, but for those who walk into their offices or make a phone call to arrange a home visit, the Commission has its doors open for registration of their complaints and provision of support. Uh, my name is Ibu Fainyai. I am the Victim Support Coordinator for TRRC. This is where you receive and then this is where we brief you on what and what you'll be doing. This is where we give you that, you know, a briefing about confidentiality, about the TRRC process, just basics. Because even though you know it, it's important when somebody's going through a process, you explain to the person, oh, you're here, you're welcome, this is what the TRRC does, this is what you're going to go through to, throughout the day. Are you comfortable with this? These are the confidentiality clause. We must give you confidence that what you tell us, you know, is confidential, you know, is going to be used to process, you know, your application, your complaint, and then we tell you what and what is going to happen because there are a lot of things happening. People sometimes have misconceptions about the TRC, but each of the mandate of the TRC, we make it clear here before you move to the next step. Then we start collecting your biodata. What's your name, your date of birth, your family details, you know, some check basics. And sometimes, lightly, we will ask you, what are you complaining? Then you explain, oh, I've been arrested, or I was detained, or my husband or my wife disappeared. Just right. Quite a number of female victims of Yaya Jami have had to privately live with pain inflicted directly or indirectly on them for 22 years. Their plight can be very intimate in nature, and so is a special and urgent concern to the TRRC. Yes, my name is Yade Konjai Eribo. I'm the coordinator for the Women's Affairs Unit at the TRRC. If the woman is not a victim, um, she's related to a victim. She's the wife of a victim. She's the mother of a victim. She's the sister. She's the daughter. So she, our, our presence is everywhere. So now m most of the, the, the biggest thing we are concerned about is making sure that gender is incorporated in, in the work of the TRRC. So since the start of the TRRC proceedings, um, what have you been doing? What service have you been offering women? Well, we, first of all, we do training for the uh, staff, for the staff, and um, we will also do training for both. We do more trainings, and, but this time we'll include the commissioners, uh, gender training, we do gender training, and also we've gone out to do community outreach so that we'll talk to the communities, especially the women. We also do women listening circles where us women, just women, we sit down and we talk about issues that affect us that should be addressed in the TRRC during the hearings. So, and also we meet victims, they are female f members, the victim female, they are, they are female family members. We meet them also. And we work closely with the psychosocial unit as well. Like I said, we work with all the units, but the, the psychosocial also, we have to make sure that if there's any psychological need that, that has to be addressed, we, we, we work with the psychosocial department as well. Even though it may bear the hallmark of a courtroom, the TRRC is not a court of law. That, uh, this is not a trial and that we are not bound by the ordinary rules of procedure that you would have in the courts uh, and uh, that the commission is the master of its own procedure. This is a truth-seeking mission and not a trial. Its ultimate aim is to reconcile communities where both victims and perpetrators of human rights violations live together. The platform it provides is for the revelation of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth first. Your presence there was not just ceremonial. It was as part of your responsibilities as AIG for operations. Is that right? Yes. As hearings go on, communities throughout the country have been targeted by the reconciliation unit of the TRRC for sensitization and awareness raising about the process going on. My name is uh, Demba Balde. I am the 
one coordinating the reconciliation unit of the truth reconciliation and reparation commission now deba um what does your office do what exactly is your role in the trrc as a, as a unit um if you look at the trrc the reconciliation unit is uh, one of the most important and uh, in fact the main objective of the trrc if it is to be realized it is to reconcile the entire country that's gambians so we at our unit as reconciliation we are responsible to design activities that would bring in true reconciliation for the nation as a whole and uh, in doing that we have to be working with um, communities local um, government structures we have to be working with um, the cbos we have to be working with other institutions because we have to make it all inclusive in order to make it all inclusive we must work with the grassroots because if you talk of reconciliation true reconciliation cannot be attained if we do not involve everybody in the gambia so our objective is to go out there at the grassroots which we have started already doing meet all the people at the grassroots and find out from them what do they think we need to do to reconcile the country in a country where young people form the majority it is inevitable that quite a number of them will be affected by the human rights violations committed most are following the goings on at the hearings with interest and need to learn worthwhile lessons emanating from it the trrc never again campaign is mainly directed at them through youth coordination activities explaining and discussing what is going on and why i am bubakar sambu Uh, the youth and children network coordinator for trrc we've been engaged on series of outreach programs school outreach as well as um, community outreach the school outreach are mainly targeting ch uh, young people children going to school and we've been going from one school to the other we've covered 32 senior secondary schools so far across the country from banjul all the way to fatoto we've covered 32 senior secondary schools and um, at least Um, 15,000 students have been spoken to within this period between the, um, November and January, and we've also conducted some youth town hall uh, meetings. One was held in Jara Soma, the other one was held in Janjambore, um, and, and then there was another one in Bansan. And these youth town halls bring young people on the National Youth Council, and even youths that are in the street, youths that are not in any formal sector. Um, to talk to them about what TRRC is all about physical deformities emanating from human rights violations can sometimes be easy to tell on the other hand emotional issues relating to witness testimony or human rights violations can be invisible and they do take their toll on victims this is recognized by the TRRC and that is why it maintains a psychosocial unit to help in alleviating the emotional effects of human rights violations on victims. So my name is Gamma Sise. I am the psychosocial support officer at the TRRC and essentially what my role is is to provide psychosocial support which involves assisting the victim a witness when they come in we try to see if they need any needs anything that has that will have stemmed from the trauma that they experience. So it could be counseling, it could be psychotherapy, it could be just a support group you know linking them with other people who have gone through the same experiences they have so they can get this chance to share experiences this is what I've gone through this is what I did this is what I'm doing now to help me get better we also try to provide home visits as well and that's why it's called psychosocial so the psycho really focuses on their mental health and their emotional health and when we say mental health it essentially talks about sadness you know being sad being angry because of what they've gone through and that links on links to their emotional state and then for the home visits we go to see if there's anything in their home and the environment that's affecting them as well based on the trauma so maybe they might have experienced some stigma because of the fact that they were victimized and that stigma is really affecting them emotionally so we can go to their home visit them counsel their families you know see if we can involve the community essentially that's what we try to do to make sure the victim or the witnesses are mentally emotionally okay and if they need any assistance we give it provided for them or to them All messages about the TRRC to the TRRC and also emanating from the TRRC are treated with professionalism and seriousness. 
My name is Isa Jalo. I am the communication specialist at TRRC. Um, that means the head of the communications unit of the uh, TRRC. The TRRC communications unit uses all media formats to collect information, keep the public informed, and also raise awareness countrywide. We have been involved in town hall meetings, in women's circles meetings, and in other activities like radio programs and television programs. Um, and also the public knows the, our main thing is the TRRC hearings themselves. This is all coordinated um, through the TRRC um, communications unit. The proceedings of the TRRC broadcast live on satellite radio, television, and also Facebook have generated unprecedented interest among Gambians as well as non-Gambians around the world. Difficult as they may be for some people to watch sometimes, many feel it is the right thing to do if Gambians are to reconcile after Gambia's divisive and tyrannical rule by a jammy. It is a commission that is set up to find out the truth in order for us to reconcile as a nation. Because um, as they say, because this Gambia is a very small nation. If you touch one, you touch the other person. And I believe a lot of things have happened in this country, whether knowingly or unknowingly. So people need to find out what actually happened, who were responsible. Then that is time we can see, we can define a mechanism in which we can forgive and forget one another. Or we try to find compensation for the affected victim. Because I believe many people were affected. Many people went on exiles. Many people were lost their lives. Many, many families were also destroyed. So I think it is a very, very important commission. Setting up the TRRC to examine human rights violations committed by Gambians, likely on Gambians, was a decision of Gambians. It became law after it was legislated by the Gambia National Assembly. Making it operational as a Gambian model is a secretariat created and staffed wholly and solely by Gambians. My name is Hadi Hadi Jalo. I'm the Deputy Director of Human Resources and Administration. I have about 100 staff, um, and that includes the commission as well. The secretariat and the commission are all grouped in the same complex. Um, we have 11 commissioners, um, four of whom are female, and the other um, seven, obviously, are male. Um, we have um, about 80-something staff, um, about 84 staff. Um, out of that 84 staff, 30% are female and obviously 70 male. Um, and I'm proud to say that they're all Gambians. Um, and of the, all the staff in the TRRC Board Commission and Secretariat, we have um, about 98% of the staff are um, youths. Um, when you take the, the, the youth range between 16 to 35, um, the 98 percent of the staff are in the in the in the youth um, um, group, so we're proud to say that as well. So we try to diversify as best as possible, um, looking at the obvious, looking at the gender gaps as well. We have quite a few teams here where we have female um, um, heads um, leading the departments. Um, as you can see, um, we have a deputy um, executive secretary. Um, Musu, and she's also in the in the, in the youth range as well. Um, we also have um, Auntie Adelaide, um, Mrs. Adelaide Sose. She's the vice um, vice chairperson of the commission as well. Um, so we try to diversify as best as possible. Six weeks into its existence, proceedings of the TRRC have now moved on to the next thematic phase which looks into the events surrounding 11th November, 1994. Can you tell us the events of November 11th as far as you experienced it? Okay. Uh, actually, uh, that weapon course was going on at the school, and the, the, course was, uh, the course ended on the 10th of November, 1994. You know, so the following day was supposed to be the, 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 the army day. You know, there is usually a ceremony. And, and the course ended on the 10th, so the course participants were supposed to obviously graduate on the 11th. Then usually after the training, you do weapon cleaning and then return the weapons to the armory. 
You said that while you were at Fajara Barracks, between 2 a.m. and around 6 a.m., you were participating in the firing against the people who were attacking the camp. Do you know who you were firing against? At that time, I didn't know. At that time, only thing I was also banking on was the information that there are enemies attacking the camp. But later, it, it came out clear that actually it was the council members with their, with their soldiers. That is, um, yeah, the council members and their soldiers, yeah. A captain of the Gambia National Army has been invited by the commission to answer to allegations of torture made against him by an earlier witness. The audience in the hall include students of senior secondary schools invited by the TRRC Youth and Children's Network to see what is going on at the hearing. I'm Aliu Tamsir Kujavi. Oh, we are quite delighted as students brought from our schools to here to witness or to see the, how the proceedings go in the TRRC. And it's been very interesting. When we talk of reconciliations, I think we are talking about a resolution of conflicts or things that had happened in the past. And all that he said here, Captain Ba, I think he's been victimized I, from what I learned. And he, was, he also committed some yeah, crimes or stuff like that. I am Defa Tuning from St. Joseph Senior Secondary School. Defa Tu, what, ha what have you learned from what you have seen today at the session? Well, I've learned a lot today during this session, and one of them is reconciliation. And that has been clearly manifested during uh, Captain Bass' speech. And he really regret what he did to Uncle OJ, and he was ready to apologize. In fact, he apologized to the entire public. He apologized to the Gamians. He apologized to Uncle OJ and to the family and everyone. And that shows that. And as part of the mandate of the TRRC is to promote reconciliation and that have been clearly manifested today. The other thing I learned today is truth. Even though the truth was bitter, he was courageous to come and face the general public and tell them what he did. Facing the general public and telling them that I did this to Uncle OJ, I blew him, I did this, I did it, takes courage to do that. And I think we and I really appreciate that from him. Truthfulness and reconciliation are one of the two important things I've learned today. And as Gambian, I believe this is what we should promote in our nation. Journalists and human rights activists are also keenly following the proceedings of the TRRC hearings and informing the public about its revelations. The TRRC has provided space and facilities for them to do their noble job. My name is Pamu Rufal. I represent the Gambia Daily, uh, covering the TRRC uh, proceedings. Uh, everything has been going fine, uh, especially on the media side. Uh, we have been uh, covering adequately and we have been getting information and we have been informing the public as to what is going on as far as the TRRC is concerned. So now, uh, uh, since we started, we have not received any complaints from the TRRC, from the media, that you have done something bad or you've misquoted and so forth. So I think that's a plus for the government media. And I think this is as a result of the training that the TRRC uh, have with the, uh, conducted with the government media and also with the government press union. I think this really you know, helped us. And I think as we are proceeding, more trainings will come. You know, because it's a learning process. This is the first time that the government media is covering the TRRC. I think it's a plus for the country. And we'll do our level best to make sure that at least we cover the TRRC proceedings adequately. As the hearings proceed day by day, more people are becoming more convinced of not only its purposefulness, but also its independence. Well, I can tell you that uh, the TRRC is uh, independent um, according to the TRRC Act. And we are maintaining our independence. We have not had any interference at all from, from the government or from any other authority. Um, we are dependent on the government and our, uh, our partners for funding, but we are totally independent in our operations, and we haven't had cause to complain about that yet. Yeah, so we are independent, we are impartial, it's not a witch hunt, and we're going to maintain that independence and impartiality going forward. Thank 
Susah mah.